What's up everyone and welcome to another first look video. We've been waiting for him for a while now, but now he's here. What do I think of Gauss? Well, let's start with how to get him. Pretty simple here. You get his parts from the disruption node on Sedna as a rotation C reward. Each part has a 10% drop rate, so hopefully it shouldn't be too hard to farm. Although it does depend on how your RNG ends up, you know, going for you. So what do you get with Gauss when you build him? Well, let's take a look at his abilities before we go fully into the build, because there's quite a lot to talk about here, because his fourth ability, uh, Red Line, causes a lot of crazy, crazy interactions, but I'm going to try and keep this as short and concise as I can. His passive is that he has a battery that will charge either by just moving or by using his abilities. This battery is going to be used in every single one of his abilities in some form or another, so it is crucial to how uh, Gauss works. First ability is Mac Rush, where you cast it and you immediately set off at a billion miles an hour in a straight line. You've got very little maneuverability at all. If you tap it, it will send you a certain distance, or until you smash your face into something. However, if you tap it and hold for a second, you'll keep on rushing until your energy runs out, or you smash your face into something. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to hold the uh, button forever. If you tap again, you'll actually come out of the ability and you will stop. Which actually gives you some really nice control. Now, I mentioned the smashing your face into things, and that is because, well, that is actually important. If you smash your face into something, be it an enemy or a solid object, you will do an AoE explosion around you, dealing guaranteed impact damage if you don't have red line up. Or, you will do slash damage with a guaranteed slash proc when redline is up. Not gonna lie, it does feel weird to be smashing your face into things, but you do get used to it reasonably quickly, and bowling over entire groups of enemies is actually stupidly satisfying. Second is kinetic plating. Honestly, it's arguably his most complicated, so strap in for this one. When you cast this outside of Redline, it blocks a percentage of incoming physical damage types as well as cold, heat, and blast. It also makes him immune to staggers and knockdowns. Now, the damage reduction that he gets, from what I can tell right now, is that it says 20 to 100%. Now, the 20 is when you have the ability active, but have a completely empty battery. But as the battery charges, your damage reduction goes up. You can only hit 100% by going into Redline. Unfortunately though, the jet, like due to the lack of any UI element to tell you what your current damage reduction actually is, I don't know what it caps out at before heading into Redline. But once you've hit that 100% in Redline, you are 100% immune to damage, which is, yeah, actually kind of crazy. You'll also get the fact that melee will do additional damage, you will also stagger enemies, if you have your kinetic plating up and you take damage, your meter will drop, so under sustained fire, you can have that actually drop reasonably quickly. But with some good use of other abilities, that can be dealt with very, very easily. One of the other abilities, to me, is a very underrated one, and I say that as someone who immediately tanked my range and completely missed just how good this ability can be, and that is Thermal Sunder. It's not a particularly complex ability. You tap to put an area of effect cold proc on the floor that shrinks towards you, and you hold the button to cast an ember style sort of ring of fire that does a heat proc. If you do either fire or cold, and then the opposite, so say for example cold and then fire, or fire then cold, you will do an AoE blast proc that will also do additional damage and knock enemies down. However, if you do cold and then cold again, you will freeze enemies absolutely solid, a bit like Frost does. And with the fact that you can now proc status on frozen enemies in the in this uh, mainline update that actually came in, it didn't used to be a thing, that is actually some really, really rather crazy cow control without losing your status proc, so you can just absolutely unload onto them. If you cast fire again though, you'll get a stronger burn on the enemy. Redline changes this quite a bit though. Damage is increased, but no more double casting on fire or cold for their stronger versions. You get an instant freeze when you're in red line, or above the red line, or an instant strong burn. Now the blast proc according to the tooltip in game is supposed to strip armor. 
going to be very honest with you here. I'm not convinced that's working right now since I have not noticed any real change whatsoever. One thing to note here though is that you are, uh, if you are doing fire and putting the fire one down, it will drain your battery and cold will recharge it. So if you're trying to charge your battery, cold is the way to go. But if you're going for the blast prop, that's effectively neutral since one will charge and one will drain. And then you got red line, the ability that changes every ability uh, that we have. You get more fire rate on weapons, more attack speed on melee, better reload, more holster speed, all of which gets stronger and stronger the more you get your battery up with red line active. The higher you push past that red line through a combination of abilities, you are actually going to receive a portion of your battery back again when the ability ends. So if you're good and are using all your abilities constantly, you can actually have close to 100% uptime on your red line buffs, and that makes a huge difference when you're fighting. It is a huge increase in damage. That's actually pretty much all the ability does on its own, but it is easily the most important ability in this kit. Weird little thing about red line though, the buffs scale with duration and not strength, which is bizarre, but kind of interesting. So that brings us onto the build, and you would not believe how many builds I've had on them already. Built strength only to realise it's not really worth it. Full duration only to realise that increasing duration actually increases your time to recharge the battery. And also then learning some of the niches and tricks of some of the abilities. So I've had actually about five builds for him already, and he's only been out for a day and a half. It's actually kind of crazy. But the build I settled on finally was the corrosive projection in the aura. Still arguably the best aura. A uh, couple of Umbral mods, we've only got uh, Vitality and Intensify on here since going full Umbral is not really worth it. And the Umbral Intensify is going to boost our uh, minimum damage reduction from Kinetic Plating. Stretch and Cunning Drift to boost the range for Thermal Thunder and for our first ability for the Explosion to basically help to boost the range to build the battery more quickly. We've got Adaptation to work with the damage reduction to make Gauss stupidly tanky. Prime Continuity and Augur Message is our duration to buff Redline, but not too much duration to make stacking the battery too difficult, but it gives us extra time to do the stacking, so it definitely helps from that point of view. And then Primed Flow to keep us being able to cast basically constantly, especially with an Energize in the Arcanes. Personally now, I'm actually running a double Energize as my Arcanes, because it allows me basically to cast my abilities till the end of time, Especially when I have Zenuric as well, but you could switch one of those out for, I mean you can switch them both for a Grayson Guardian if you wanted, or a Guardian and an Energize, which is, uh, the Guardian Energize is actually what most of the footage is running currently, so there's actually really is a couple of options here in terms of what, like, what you want to do with the build. So what do I think of Gauss? Honestly, he's completely turned me around and he's throwing me for a loop at the same time. It's actually kind of crazy. Like, when I saw his abilities, when they were leaked, and even when they were shown on the dev stream, I wasn't convinced. I didn't think he was going to be that good at all. I thought he was going to scale badly, and I thought he was going to be, honestly, fairly useless. And even when I started playing him, I wrote off Thermal Sunder immediately. The low-ish base range, and honestly, not that great damage meant I just wasn't really that interested. But the more I played with the frame and the abilities, he grew on me super quickly and I realised that his entire kit was actually relevant to playing. The speed is more controllable than I expected. Kinetic plate is simply amazing. The freezing from thermal thunder is incredible crowd control. I still dislike the heat and the blast because the damage isn't that great and heat procs tend to break a lot of animations needed for things. And then Redline just takes everything to the next level. Gunplay, melee, you name it, Gauss does it, and he does it amazingly. He absolutely turned my thoughts around on him, and fair play, I love being surprised and having my initial thoughts be wrong. Is he a vault killer? Not a chance. This entire time, the rip vault meme has been going on. He's not replacing vault anytime soon. As a straight speedrun frame, people are still, I think, personally going to use Nova and Vault for indoor sets. Because in straight lines, Gauss is going to win, but the lack of any maneuverability, those others are going to move ahead pretty quickly. Plus, Volt still has his niche as the linchpin of a decent idol on team, and also Volt's 4, which can be a fantastic nuke when used properly. So no, Gauss will absolutely not be replacing Volt anytime soon. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video on my initial thoughts and observations on Gauss. Let me know in the comments below what you think of him, if you think I've missed anything, if you think I've missed something that I should really try out. I've changed my build so many times that maybe there's another one I should try out that's just as effective. Thank you all so much for watching, feel free to hit that like button, sub for more content, and I shall catch you in the next one.